Good morning and welcome to the devotions for Wednesday the 3rd of November. My apologies in advance for the sound of my voice. Uh, as some of you already know, I was away at the weekend at the Methodist Youth Event 3 Generate. And whilst it would have been nice to have brought a hoodie or a hat, even a badge home as a souvenir, I brought a cold home. Uh, so apologies for the strange voice that I've got this morning. But I do want to share with you about the weekend away. It's a long time since I've been on a Methodist weekend. I think last time I was probably about 12 or 13 myself. And it was MAYC in London. A sea of yellow and green in Hyde Park, Trafalgar Square and even the Royal Albert Hall. So 3 Generate is the modern equivalent of that. But very, very different. For the past few years, it has been at Pontins in Southport, but last year it should have started being at the NEC in Birmingham, but obvious reasons it didn't go ahead. So this year was the first year it was at the NEC, and I'd never been there either. So I went with Anne and her daughter Susanna, and we hijacked the Chesterley Street group and got on their coach as well, well, minibus, and off we went last Friday. Now, because we were only a little group, the three of us, our tent was number one in the village. So it was very easy to find. We couldn't get lost because it was the first one you came to. And in fact, the village was amazing. There was tents as far as the eye could see. Big tents with a couple of bedrooms for the leaders and then the children and young people were supposed to sleep in those smaller pop-up tents. Now that came with its own problems. They're not very big and they expected two children and young people to get into these tents. Which is fine if you're only about 10 but when you're taking teenage boys who normally have got big feet and long legs. Getting two of them in those tents was not going to work. Thankfully, we had two spare ones and they soon disappeared to be used by bigger people. The village was in one end of the area that we were occupying. And then as you walked through into the town, there was the volunteers village full of big tents and then closer into the town was a section called On the Margins. And of course, this area was neither in the town nor in the village. And it was a section where the children and young people could explore what it's like to be on the edge of things. The edge of church, the edge of life even. And see what they could do to actually help. And then as you continued in to the town, you were faced with a multitude of inflatable pods. There was a place called the wilderness, which actually had lots and lots of stones and sand and cacti, making you think about Jesus in the wilderness. And sometimes how we feel like we are in a wilderness too. There was an inflatable town hall where lots of different things were going on. There was an inflatable theatre where you could go and do some choreography or tell jokes or learn how to write. And there was also various people being doing their own thing as well. There was an inflatable health and well-being space, which was very well attended, particularly on the Saturday morning when the therapy dogs were there. There was an arts and crafts area where people could make flags and try their hand at, at printing and all sorts of other things. And some of the Methodist church's own artwork were on show as well. There was a sports arena where football was played and other sports. And there was also a section where you could learn how to play drums too. There was a park complete with trees and picnic benches 
and also some fairground attractions like knocking the tin cans over or hook a duck. There was also our eating area set out a bit like a school hall really with lots of wooden tables and benches where we could share breakfast together and our evening meals. And the piece de resistance was an inflatable church. We all got very excited about this inflatable church and had wonderful ideas of how it could actually be used in our own settings. People aren't going to come to church, we'll take it to them. And after Googling, and I think many, many people Googled this inflatable church, we discovered that you could even get inflatable pews, an inflatable organ. Not sure you could get an inflatable organist, an inflatable pulpit, and I'm assuming you'd probably get an inflatable font as well. And in there, it was a prayer space, it was a worship space, and just a space to chill, really, to feel safe in God's presence. And because it was all inside, it didn't matter the fact that it tanked it down most of the weekend, because most of the time we didn't know. In fact, none of us saw daylight until Sunday afternoon when we were leaving. But as I said, because it was all indoors, and there was security on all of the doors, both from 3GN volunteers and from the NEC staff, who, I'd like to point out, were amazing. Nothing was too much for any of them. We knew that the children and young people were safe, which was great because there was an area called the well, which was specifically for the adult leaders to go and chat with each other, do a bit of networking, there was one or two workshops, which I took advantage of. And there was lots of volunteers there who were quite happy to make you a cup of coffee. And there was lots of goodies, edible goodies, that all youth workers need. There was also time to spend in worship services too. There was a wonderful... Uh, late night communion service which i took part in and on the sunday morning before we left there was a worship service that everybody joined in there was a worship band some of the volunteers had put together some drama and obviously there was a speaker too but part way through the service the youth president dan came up and stopped the service why They'd had a prayer request and he wanted all of us to pray. There was a group from the Isle of Man and they just learned that they might not be able to get home as the ferries had been cancelled because of the weather. So we prayed that the ferry would be reinstated and we prayed for everybody that depending on where you were going, and what the weather was going to be like, that we'd all get home safely. And the service continued. About 10 minutes later, he was back with an update. Wonderful news. The ferry is back on. The Isle of Man contingent can get home. So there was shouts of Amen and Hallelujah and everybody got very excited. And then the service continued. The service ended and we were all encouraged to go and find our luggage and to queue up to leave the place and collect our lunch on the way out. We all had little bags with our packed lunches in so everybody was going to get fed on the way home. But obviously, travelling home four hours, the main thing you want to do is find the toilet before you leave. And ladies, you will know that there's always a queue. And there was. So we stood there in the queue talking about this wonderful answer to prayer and then a lady behind me piped up she said but what you don't know and she said I'm the leader of the Isle of Man group is the fact that all the ferries before hours were cancelled and all the ferries after hours are still cancelled there's only hours is going how amazing is that 
And what a wonderful testimony as well when they get home to be able to share that with their church. And what a wonderful testimony for all of us, really, that that power of prayer has got that group safely home over the sea. And I'd like you all to pray as well. As I say, there was me and there was Anne and Susanna from the circuit. And my prayer is that next year we won't have to hijack Chesterley Street's minibus as we'll be able to take our own. We'll be able to take a group of our own young people from the circuit. So please pray into that, that we can take a group of our own with us. Let's pray now. Dear God, we thank you for answered prayer. We thank you that in those moments on Sunday morning, you heard our prayers and that ferry was put in place to get this group safely home. We just pray for our own circuit, that in 11 months time, we will be able to take a group of our own children and young people to see that they're not on their own. Over this past year, I think many have become disillusioned and just see that there's only one or two of them in the church but help them to realise that whilst they may only be one or two in the area, across the country, there are hundreds and probably thousands of children and young people who are coming to know you. Help us to enthuse them to come to this weekend and learn more about you and what they can do in their own church. We ask this in your name. Amen. So God bless and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.